Chapter 7 Array Lists Learning Target I can learn to declare, create, and use an array list. I can learn and invoke the array list methods. Array Lists An array list stores a sequence of values whose size can change. An array list can grow and shrink as needed. Array List class lets you collect objects. There are two advantages of using array list over arrays. Array list class supplies methods for many common tasks such as inserting and removing elements. An array list expands to hold as many elements as needed. It automatically resizes itself when it runs out of space and the capacity is doubled. Array list basics. The array list class is found in the java.util package. To use it, you have to type the following line of code import java.util.arraylist. The ArrayList class is a generic class. That means ArrayList T collects objects of type T. Now T type could be a string or T type could be a class type. The first element of an ArrayList index is always zero. The default constructor of ArrayList sets the size of the ArrayList to zero. Declaring ArrayList. To use an ArrayList, import java.util.arraylist at the beginning of the program. To declare an ArrayList of strings, you need to have you need to have the keyword ArrayList, opening angle bracket, and the type string, and close the angle brackets, and then the name of the variable, ending with a semicolon. So when we look at this syntax in here, we are going to say names is our ArrayList, and that's of type string. Now, angle brackets denote a type parameter. So we can replace string with any other class like bank account or integer, etc. And for this reason, ArrayList is a generic class. Declaring and instantiating ArrayList. To declare an ArrayList of strings, we're going to call the ArrayList as names. And we're going to say names is an ArrayList and that's of type string. And we're creating a new array list and by default the size is going to be zero. I keep in mind the syntax for creating a new array list. That means you need to have the new keyword and then you have your keyword array list with an open angle bracket, the type string and then close the angle bracket and then you have an opening and closing parenthesis ending with semicolon. Another example in here bank account is the type we are creating accounts array list the type is bank account so this part is declaring an array list and this part is instantiating an array list so instantiating means you need to have a new operator and then your keyword array list with an open angle bracket and then your type close the angle bracket and opening and closing parentheses ending with a semicolon. The syntax of the array list. Now if we take a look at an example array list string names equals to new array list string. This is your variable type that means we are creating an array list that's of type string. So names is going to be the name of the variable. New is your operator for creating and instantiating an object. Array list string opening and closing parenthesis this tells that we are creating an array list object of size 0 so how do we read the statement we're going to say names is an array list that's of type string how do i access an element in my array list to access an element from an array list you need to use the get method so if I want to just get a value at index 2, I'm going to invoke the get method and the parameter I'm going to use is as index. Now keep in mind you're saying array list reference. Now when I say names, names is not an actual array list, it's the actual array list reference. In here I'm going to say names.getIndex i. Now before we get the value we need to add. So I can also say names.add Jose. That means I'm adding the name Jose to our list names. Now, another way to access an element is using the set method if I want to change the element in my array list. If, now, to change the value at an index, you need to know what index it is 
and what value you need to replace with. So in here I'm going to call my array list reference names dot set at location i that means at index i whatever the value is change that value with brand. Add array list method. Now as soon as we create an array list by default the size is zero. Now to use the add method to add an object to the end of the array list. Use the add method to add an object to the end of the array list. For example, we have an array list called names. We're going to say names.add Emily. So I'm going to add Emily in my array list. So now the size of my array list is 1 and the element is Emily. I'm going to add another name, names.add Bob. Now my list names has two elements and they are Emily and Bob. So the size of the array list is 2. I'm going to add another one, names.add Cindy, names as now my list is of size 3 and the elements are Emily, Bob and Cindy. The elements are stored in sequential order, starting with index 0, then index 1, index 2 and so on. And all the item by default using the add method is, is added at the end of the array list. So here's our names array list and when we create our array list, and when we look into our array list, it's going to look like this. Emily, Bob, Cindy. They're going in sequence at index 0, index 1, index 2. So the size of our array list is 3. And the size keeps increasing. And the new element is always added at the end. Let's take a look at another way to use the add method. The add method can also be used to insert a value at a specific position inside the array list. It shifts the subsequent values towards the end of the array list. After any call to add method, the size of the array list increases by 1. Now let's take an example in here. Names.add1 prime. That means at index 1, I need to add element prime. So this statement adds the object at position 1 and moves all the elements by one position. Let's take a look at another example. Names.add2 and 8. Adds the object at position 2 and moves all the elements by position 1. So here's our names array list. And this is our original list that we had created before in my previous slide. We had three items that we added using just add method, Emily, Bob, and Cindy. They're at index 0 is Emily, index 1 is Bob, index 2 is Cindy, and our original list was 3. Now we added two more items into our list. Now let's take a look where are they going to be added. So now when we say add Brian at location 1, so this is our Brian element at location 1. And then we said add Anaid at index position 2. So we added Anaid at index position 2. And hence, all the elements are shifted at the end of the array list to make space to add the new items at a specific location. So now the size of the array list is 5. Let's watch a video to actually see how do we add an element into our array list. This animation demonstrates inserting an element into an array list. Now we have an array list with seven items in here. The starting index value is zero, then one, two, three, four, five, six. A new element will be inserted at index four. So now the size of the array is increased. Now instead of having seven items, we have eight items. All the items starting with index four is going to be shifted down. So the last element is moved to a new location. Elements are moved starting from the end of the array. The last element that is moved is the one at the insertion location. The new value is placed into the insertion location. Next is set array list method. 
The set method is used to assign the value of an element at a given subscript position to a new object value. It basically overwrites existing values. Here's an example. System.out.println name starts set 1 Jose. That means um, what I'm saying is whatever pos value you have at position 1, change that or overwrite it or replace that value with Jose. So if I take a look at my original list, my original list at position 1 was Brian. Now we are going to overwrite Brian with Jose. So we have Emily, Jose, Anaid, Bob, and Cindy. Same, the size of the array is still the same because we are not removing or adding, we are just replacing or overwriting a value. Get array list method. The get method is used to return the value stored at a given position. Let's take a look at the example in here. We are going to print the value at position 3. So I'm going to say system.out.println and names.get3. That means get the value at position 3 from the list names and print it. Let's take a look at another example. We have created a bank account class before and we want to get the bank account at location 3. So I'm going to say accounts Let's take a look at the bank account class. We created this account, we created this bank account class before. We created this bank account class before in chapter 3. We want to get the account at certain location. So I'm going to say accounts.get3. That means I'm going to get the account that is at index 3 and I'm going to store it in a variable called first that is of type bank account. Size, a realist method. The size method gives the current size of the array list. For example, we can say names.size and then store it in a variable called length and then you could print the length. When I say names.size, it's going to give me the size of the array list that's size 5. Now always remember that JVM will throw an index out of bounds exception if an index is accessed that is outside the bounds and will terminate the program. Now if I write a statement that says system.out.println names.get names.size, this will throw an error. In this statement, names.size, that gives the size of the array list, and we are getting that size using the get method, and then we are printing it. So if we write a statement like this, we would have a runtime error. So in order to fix that, you, don't, you need to make sure that you add that minus 1 at the end. And the reason to do that, if I have 5 elements in my array list, the last item is always at in, uh, size minus 1 index. So to fix that error, we can say system.out.println names.get names.size minus 1. So this will get the last index. In this statement in here, we're getting the last index of the array list and we're printing that. So names.size minus 1, size in here is 5, 5 minus 1 is 4. So this value is going to be 4 and we're saying get 4. That means we're saying get the value at index 4 and then print it. To add minus 1, remove array list method. The remove method is used to remove a value at a given position. Now all the values behind that position are shifted forward in the array list. Example, name start remove 1. So we are removing the value at position 1. Now let's take a look at the video uh, to see how the remove actually works. This animation demonstrates removing an element from the array list. The element at index 4 will be removed. Next element replaces the removed element. So the value at index 5 is going to be shifted up. Elements are moved starting from the removal location. The last element to be moved is at the end of the array list. And then the size of the array list is reduced. Now in our class we have studied three different data types, arrays, string, and studying array list right now. How to find the length of an array or length of an array list or the length of a string. When we want to find the length of the array, we use length property. If A is an array, we're going to say A dot length. No parenthesis in here because length is property, not a method. 
Next for string, and if A is a string, we're going to use the length method. So A dot length. So length a property. It's for arrays, length as a method is for string. Now we're studying array list right now. So to find the length of an array list, we're going to use the size method. If A is our array list, we're going to invoke the size method on this object A dot size. So in your AP test, remember very well array is length property. Array list is size method and string is length method.